Cool. Uh, is it cool if I just explain a little bit about what bingo is before I... No. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to be busy during the start of the run, so it'll be nice to get out of the way beforehand. So I'm going to be doing a short bingo run, which if you know what bingo is, it's different in that it's all child goals. If you don't know what bingo is, uh, it's basically just a bunch of randomly generated goals onto a bingo board, and you need to complete a row, a column, or a diagonal. Uh, and I say randomly generated, but there's actually a lot of work that goes into making sure that most of the rows are pretty balanced and should be roughly about the same time as each other. Every so often, you get some that are just really good. Um, so I haven't seen this bingo board beforehand. Uh, I think you guys can see it right now, but I haven't pulled it up yet, and I won't until I start the run. Um, so basically, I'll be starting, looking at it, uh, finding the goals, the rows that I like, and then uh, coming up with an entire route planned around it, uh, all within the opening cutscene. And then I'll have to, you know, go and do the run. So I will try to go through my thought process and how I choose the rows and all that, what sort of goals I like as I'm looking at the card. But there's a good chance it'll just come out as rambling because I'll be focused. So uh, hopefully that works. Uh, I'm actually using it for my phone to uh, look at the bingo card, so thank you, though. <laughs> All right, I'm... Uh, one second, actually. Okay. Oh. Actually, could you adjust the mic, like bend it in towards your mouth a bit more? Yeah. You yep, can sure. come out there and do it too if needed. Is that at all better? I, this thing Either way, it'll probably work. Yeah, we're good. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, I've got the card up, haven't looked at it yet. Ready to start when you are? All right, count down for five, four, three, two, one, go! All right. So right away, things that I'm looking for are anything related to having to go and see Zelda are things I don't really like, like Magic Bar and Bottom Right. Uh, that's probably not worth the time it takes because that's a really long goal. Um, skull mask is pretty slow, uh, so I'm gonna mark both of those right on my card. Um, let's see. <laughs> Defeat a skull kid is another kind of slow one. Sorry, I'm just gonna take some time to look at this. And
Okay, so I'm seeing a couple pretty okay ones. Um, I think... I think I'm gonna end up going with column four. Um, let's actually hang on a second. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with row two, actually. Might not be the fastest in there, but it's uh, looking like a fairly fast run. It's a little more safe for Marathon. So I'm gonna start off by just getting sword and some other things and let me take another look at this. I'm gonna wanna collect bottle. Okay, that was pretty good movement through there. So if you have slow movement through this area, you can get hit by the, the boulders on your way out and it ends up losing you a bit of time. So that was nice. Right now I'm just getting enough rupees to get uh, two sticks and a nut. Um, that'll be useful for a trick that I'll be doing in a minute here. So if you're interested in learning more about bingos, I definitely recommend watching Runner Guy's SGDQ 2018 run. He goes into a lot about like the history of bingos and stuff like that too. Uh, makes it really interesting to know like where it came from, how much work has gone into refining it into what we have today. Um, great run to check out. Also, you'll notice I haven't equipped the sword yet. That's because I'm going to be doing uh, uh, 1.0 exclusive trick that is going to be a faster way to get bomb shoes. So I need to be swordless to do that. All right, that was a nice little skip right there. It's actually a frame perfect jump slash at a pretty precise angle but it's not too bad when you got a good feel for it, so. This game is full of all sorts of like little glitches and skips like that. Time for a donation? Uh, yeah, that'd be good. We got a $25 donation from Robotic Dream that says, good luck Condor from your friends at the Mari Safari. Ah, uh, thanks Robotic. Shoutouts to the Mari Safari. <laughs> also, shoutouts to Tixel. He's one of the guys who taught me a lot of what I know. 
Okay, so to get a slide like this, uh, you need to be holding at a pretty precise uh, joystick angle. And when I slide past the owl there, if you played the game casually, you know that normally that owl talks to you a lot and it's really annoying. But if we can slide past him like that, it's not too bad. We just go right past him and he doesn't talk to us. Uh, if you're in like a occupied state, either in like a slide or pulling out an item, then he won't stop you. So I'm gonna be collecting these chickens here to get a bottle. And I wanna do it fast before uh, Navi goes away, so. There, Navi just popped up there. And she goes away after a bit of time. And I actually need her to get into the bottom of the well. So I want to finish up these chickens quickly before I lose the prompt for Navi. Looks like I'm on pretty good pace, though. All of the chickens are really close together here, so normally we'd throw a Deku Nut or something to get them to run away instantly, but I would have hit the other chicken with it if I had done it there, and he would have started running away from me in the opposite direction, so. Just decided to play it safe and, you know, just collect it normally. All right, and we made it in time for Navi, so. That's called Navi Dive right there, where you use the, the text from Navi to, uh, you do a jump slash and then talk to Navi, and Link takes like a little step back after he does jump slash. Um, so he steps off the ledge, but since the game thinks that you're uh, on ground, it just adjusts you to the next on ground location which is at the bottom of the well. All right, so that trick right there is uh, the one I was talking about that you need to be swordless for. Uh, it's called Blank A. It's a 1.0 exclusive trick, um, which you can only do on N64, so. Um, hang on, let me double check my card. I forgot where I'm going next. Um, I am going to pick up a shield while I'm in the bottom of the well. So as you know, a lot of enemies in Ocarina of Time have strange names. That little floating skull right there was called a bubble, and that's gonna be important later because of something I think is hilarious. Well, we'll be going to uh, Jabu later, the, the fish dungeon, and in his belly, there are a bunch of enemies that are just floating bubbles. But of course, they're not called bubbles. They are called shabams. Is it a good time for a quick donation? Uh, yeah, go ahead. There is a $2 donation from Helix that says, Hi from the front row. Good luck, Condor. Thanks, Helix.
Okay, so next we're gonna make our way over to our first goal. Oh, okay, and I missed the, you can skip the owl again by pulling the stick. I think I was a little low on the stairs, so I was too close to him when I did the side hop. But I'm gonna head over to Lon Lon Ranch and grab the heart piece. Oh wait, we're not going to Jobby for this row. I was confusing that with my last row. I almost picked a different one and then switched, so. <laughs> also, you'll notice that I'm back walking pretty much everywhere in this game. Uh, that's because it is much faster than uh, walking forward or even rolling. So the fastest way to move is to Hess, but that requires explosives or uh, a damage source or something to recoil off of in a specific way. So in most places, I will just be back walking for safety. So that was a specific angle jump slash that let me clip through the block there to get to this heart piece. And that is our first goal there. Actually. Oh my gosh. I'm not used to leaving this room. I always save warp out of it. But I think I'm going to keep going from here. You guys can mark off Lon Lon Ranch HP, by the way. It's in row two. I thought I'd try a Hess there off the tree. I'm still not entirely positive about how many bomb chews I'll need throughout this route though. So I'm just gonna stick with the one attempt for now. So there's another owl coming up here. This one is much easier to avoid. Uh, since I didn't get the Hess, I'm not going to go straight past it, but we can avoid it pretty easily by just coming over to the side of it. I guess they only expected you to come from Hyrule Castle side and not loop around like that, so you can just go right past him if you come from the other side. Welcome to arguably the best music in the game, Gerudo Valley. Here we're going to be doing a, um, a mega flip to get over this. So I need to pause buffer this backflip here because if you don't, 
hitting A to do the backflip will just result in you talking to the guard. And I'm going to pause buffer to a specific frame. Okay, and I got first frame, or first try, on the second frame that I needed. So I'm not out of the water yet. Uh, I got across the fence, but if either of these guards catch me, they will throw me uh, into the river. And we don't want that, so we're gonna wait for, and they got me anyways, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> okay, so that's a decent time loss, actually. Uh, I got a little hasty there, I guess. Let's we'll see if we can get back to them quickly. I'd like to dedicate this inverted camera backlock to Rocket. Dang. Okay, so now we're here at night, and the guard's vision at night is considerably worse. So hopefully we won't have as much trouble with it this time. Okay. All right, we're in the clear now. So now I have to get Gerudo's card, which normally in a casual playthrough is something that you do as adult. Obviously, you're not even supposed to be able to get back here as child. Um, casually, there's no way over that fence, but... Uh, the like triggers and everything for getting Gerudo's card are still there as child. They didn't bother to take them out since you're not supposed to be able to get here at all anyways. So we just need to defeat all of the Gerudo guards and free all of the carpenters. So I'm gonna be using a trick called ISG to do this hopefully quickly. Um, Okay, that wasn't terrible, but sometimes they can be really tricky and backflip a lot and get away from you. If you're lucky, you can get them and uh, stun lock and just kill them really fast. Uh, that wasn't too bad though.
and I don't remember if I safety saved in here or not. If I lose to any of these guards, or they don't even have to kill me. I think if they knock you down um, with one of their attacks, then you automatically normally get thrown in jail as adult, but as child, you just get thrown back out into the river. Uh, the reason for that is because if you have an item in the hookshot slot, that is what causes you to get thrown in jail. So if I were to use RBA or uh, those sorts of glitches to write an item into my hookshot slot, um, which you can do in short bingos, then uh, they would actually throw me in jail instead. Which the only way out of is to just save warp and go back to Kokiri Forest. So that's big time loss. But yeah, you can save in Gruda's Fortress, and then if they catch you and throw you out in the river, you can just reset and end up back in the fortress. So I'm going to play it safe for Marathon and probably just save after each one of the guards. Um, Oh, and I'm storing Jump Slash with the stick for that uh, before I get ISG. And I'm getting ISG off of talking to all of these carpenters. It works by interrupting a crouch stab with an action. So like talking to someone or picking up an item. Um, and the way the game works is it actually always does the damage. A crouch stabs always do the damage of the last attack that you did. So... Um, Storing the jump slash with the stick, uh, the stick actually does the same amount of damage as the master sword for some reason, but it would normally break after one hit. Uh, so I store jump slash with stick and then get ISG with the crouch stab. And then all of the hits of ISG um, do the same amount of damage as a jump slash with the stick or the master sword. I'm going to try. Uh, Mega flip here. It's a bit of a time saver. All right, got it. So the reason I didn't buffer that one, but I did buffer the mega flip that I had to do to get into Gerudo Valley, is that um, if you do a mega flip on a specific frame, it actually will get you more distance. Ooh, I actually don't know if I like that. I'm going to go out and try that again. This is probably one of the hardest guards to get past. Wow, she's being tricky. There we go. All right, so Grudo's card is gonna be coming up soon. I'm going to be heading for Bottled Fairy next because there is one near this spot that should be pretty easy to get. So we have Gerudo's card now, so none of the guards will catch us. That's nice. Oh, 
Now, as adult, there's a really tricky way to get past this gate. I mean, if you have Gerudo's card, you can just open it. But as child, you can't open it, even if you have Gerudo's card. But luckily, the gate skip is way easier than the adult one. You just side hop, roll, and then side hop. Now, in a casual playthrough, you would normally need the long shot, or even in a speed run, you would normally need hover boots to get across this. But with a specific angle, we can just back walk across the sand river and not get sucked into the quicksand. Now we've got to navigate through the desert, which is actually harder to do at night but we only need to go halfway through. And the difficult part is the second half, so it should be fine. There we go, that's Bottled Fairy. I could have done this earlier in the run, and it probably would have been a better place to do it. But in all honesty, I was still in the middle of deciding between two different rows at the start of the run. So I kind of forgot that this was one of the ones that I had to do. But it's not going to be that much of a time loss to just make it up now. So. All right, so we're just going to be going through here. We're going to be taking a specific route to collect uh, just enough rupees for five magic beans. And then we'll come back and get the other two in a little bit. So now that I have uh, Bottled Fairy, I actually can't die for the rest of the run, which uh, shouldn't be an issue since I don't have anything too, too difficult left to do. That jump is a little tricky actually, but nothing I can die over. Um, but yeah. In, in other bingos, it's kind of risky to grab fairy early because bottles are useful for a lot of things and you also need to be worried about dying and losing your fairy. Um, 
there are just a lot of ways in which you would have to uncheck one of the goals that you've already gotten, which you never really want to do. If you're routing well anyways, you should never have to uncheck a goal. Or if you know that you're going to lose it, but it's more convenient to get it, you just normally don't check in the first place. Um, anyways, we need this chicken to come over here and float down to this platform here. Tricky side hop coming up here. Hopefully I'll be able to get it first try. All right. got the Wes again, so we get to skip the owl again. I have not been caught by that redid. Maybe ever. <laughs> Definitely not in a long time. All right, so that's gonna get us a lot of rupees, which should be enough to get us the last two beans if we pair that with a few more rupees from Zora's River. Now we gotta do this tricky jump again. All right, got it. So as you might have noticed, a lot of the rupee routing in this comes down to like within one or two rupees of what I need. So at all times, we're just trying to not get anything more than you need. Just 
to go as quick as possible. And that is seven magic beans, so that's another goal. And now we just need to go and beat the Deku Tree. So this guy asks you for sword and shield, and uh, you can actually, <laughs> if you mess up doing an RBA glitch, um, which like writes items in and out of your inventory and gets a bottle on the B button, uh, if you do that and accidentally save and reset with the bottle on your B button, you can lose your sword, and then that guy won't let you in. So something that's normally like not even an obstacle can be a run under. There's all sorts of wacky stuff like that in short bingos that you got to be careful about. I actually just had that happen to me like yesterday. <laughs> it's a great confidence builder for uh, this marathon practice to not be able to finish her on, but this is ending up pretty well. I think we're on pace for a decent time. Okay, so right there, I pulled out the stick. Like I was talking about earlier, it works the same way of skipping the owl, but normally Navi will pop up and be like, hey, Link, listen, these are vines. You can climb on those. But uh, if you pull stick right before you grab onto the vine, that will skip her popping up and talking to you. Uh, that's the same reason I jumped onto the chest right there and then jumped off it onto the vines instead of running straight to them. Uh, because you have to skip Navi every time you come to the vines. I think that was really, yeah, okay. You can do a precise jump slash there to skip uh, basement level one, but there's a nice backup for it right here. And easy. <laughs> All right, that was a pretty fast two, three, one room. Uh, you need to hit those Deku scrubs in a specific order to be able to get past them and open the door. And now we've got Goma fight, so. This should hopefully go pretty fast. Whenever there's a good time for a donation. All right, um, right after the fight. Okay. So just a second. from Toasted Donut that just says heart. Oh, thanks, heart. Toasted. <laughs> Love goes out to everyone in the Ocarina of Time community and everyone in the short bingo community, too. Um, you guys are great. And weekly races have been so much fun, so... All right, so time is going to be, uh, it's still a little while. Uh, it's going to be towards the end of this cutscene when uh, the text box pops up for uh, Link holding the stone above his head, I think. Or maybe it's as soon as he holds it above his head. <laughs> I'll look into that right now.
Okay, when you're holding it above your head. So, when we hear the da 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 da. Oh, so now that the run is over, I probably should have brought this up at the start. So according to bingo rules, you're actually supposed to be running in English. Um, I got permission from Midwest Speedfest or Midwinter Speed Sprinter to run in Japanese uh, because uh, my English cart kind of broke. So I don't, <laughs> I don't have one currently. Um, but yeah, most of the goal times are based around English. I didn't do anything too like text heavy, so none of the rows that I did should have been affected by it too much, except for opening cutscene, which honestly just gives me less time to plan my route and this cutscene right here. But um, that's not a hugely significant time save, but it wouldn't be um, valid in like a official race or anything. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything plays the same. Um, it's just unfortunate that my English cart ended up breaking. I think the, the reason for it being supposed to be in English is just that it's more accessible to more people, which is kind of <laughs> ironic because now a lot of people I know who are interested in bingos have a Japanese copy of the game because they speedrun it, but they don't have an English copy, so. All right, time's coming up. If I remember correctly, we actually had our donation incentive met for a, a bonus run. So, uh, should we just hop into that right now? All right, I'll just reset then. So, uh, the run we're going to be doing is called the Gooby Percent Run, which essentially, if you know any meme categories from Ocarina of Time, is just Jotwad, jump off the watchtower and die. But you do it with a jump slash instead. Do you want to care to explain why, Gooby? <laughs> Also, for it to be there valid, go. Gooby has to be the one to do the input. Yep. So this might be free world record <laughs> right here. So yeah, Gooby percent has to be done with me. <laughs> that's just the rule. <laughs> also, we start from a save file that's already um, past opening cutscene. So we're just going to get right into things. Oh. Um, are we good to go whenever? Yeah, can you just repeat? Yep, I can. Okay. All right. Cool. 
said. There's a lot of different, like, uh, short meme Ocarina of Time categories out there. There's, like, what? There's dank percent. There is meat percent. Yeah. Stuff like that. There's spicy percent. Spicy. That was one you made. Yeah. <laughs> So, Saria wants to be our friend right there. We're just going to ignore her. We've got Goobin to do. <laughs> so, I'm going to be getting enough for two sticks right here. Because... Uh, normally, for a Jotwad, you'd only need one. But because we need to jump slash off of the watchtower... We actually need an extra stick. You got a stick. <laughs> he wasn't Aww. as excited about that stick. You didn't. <laughs> no celebration for the second one. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> Do you want me to make the sound effects again? Oh, you go for it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. We have a $16 donation from Green Mixtape saying, Original Green Yoshi. None of those fake phony want to be Green Yoshis. Keep it green. <laughs> Keep it green. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Green Mixtape. When you're doing a <laughs> you know what? That's a bad okay. idea. <laughs> Just threw in some unnecessary Z targets and hopes for some. <laughs> Rocket, this goes out to you. Oh shoot! Oh, no. And it got cut short by the angle change. <laughs> I did one for you earlier, but you weren't here for it. <laughs> I was here in your heart. <laughs> okay, so we actually need to get to CAC before night. Um, if we had gotten sword, we would be able to do this route even during the night, but... <laughs> Okay. So this is actually going to be very close now. There's a chance. I may need to reset, but. <laughs> it's okay. Of course, I got that trick a bunch of times in the, the short bingo. And now that it's absolutely crucial that I don't <laughs> mess it up. And then the real run comes up. <laughs> yeah, the real run. <laughs> I think we made it. <laughs> oh. I hear chickens. We made it just in time. So <laughs> at, at nighttime, uh, there is a Skulltella that spawns on the top of the clock tower. Um, also, I forgot to take damage on the way here, which is good because we would not have made it in time for night if I had taken the damage. It's all part of the plan. I'm going to be honest, most of my time practicing went into <laughs> short bingo. I didn't really practice Gooby percent I can't much. believe you. I can't believe <laughs> you. <laughs> so we're just going to have to take damage by doing this a couple times, <laughs> which is <laughs> slow. But it's OK, because we're still going to get world record, because there has not been a run yet where Goob has done the last input. Yep. <laughs> Does that technically make this a co-op run? I think so. <laughs> so you're going to have to hit the button twice when I do the side hop off. <laughs> or when, okay. when you side hop off. <laughs> because one press pulls the stick, and the second one does the jump slash. OK, so just uh, jump slash BB. Or would uh, it be side? Jump slash C left, C okay. left. Oh. <laughs> 
Here it is, moment of truth. Okay, jump off, and then C stick left, left. Do I back foot? Uh, side hop. Don't back foot. Yes. There we go. Woo. Time. World record in Gooby <laughs> percent. <laughs> 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 Congrats on the world record. Yeah. Same goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Condor, for your runs. And Gooby for the co-op run. <laughs> Next up, we have Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. And that'll be pretty fun. It's ran by Woofer ZFG. So be right back while we get that set up. 